because I am one of the last of the Mackay princes, founders of Ireland and Scotland, I feel compelled to reveal to you the knowledge that our Druids always had for centuries and thousands of years. In contact with the Brahmins of India and the thinkers of Greece. Altogether, we all have astrology, Jyotish. In Erin, we called it Nila Dwara, to draw from the blue, which matches Sanskrit. Jyotish can be taken to mean the light of God, more correctly than the science of man. It is better to see it as Jyoti Ishwara, the brilliant emanation of light from God, the Brahma Jyoti as the Brahmins of India teach us. Ourselves we call the wave arm of this galaxy known as Milky Way now. We used to call it Unwind, and we thought all the stars were our ancestors' bones. Excuse the bandages, but I have recently come from a run-in with folliculitis. Now then, this is what we knew. Gathering it for thousands of years through many different empires, generations starting in Sumeria, we were watching. And now, with your NASA, it is all confirmed. What my friend Parashara taught a while ago, when that great creed, Jeshua, Jesus was around. It is confirmed by NASA and myself using modern things called computers. Now, I reveal to you the secret of life. You are on a rock that has been formed over a long period of time. It has spun to perfection. It is in the water flow zone distance from the sun, which means water can be in the ocean, be evaporated, be clouds, drop snow on mountains, which makes rivers, it cuts the mountains, revealing minerals and gems and making floodlands and plains for agrarian life. And then God put life on earth to complex vibration, I'll teach you. And then into that life, he put sentient souls to witness those lives to learn because they were new. We are advanced now, in advanced classes, we were new, but so long has passed since we were seated here. The earth is here, around it, are the stars called the zodiac. Why are they important and not these ones? Because this is the layer on which the planets are all traveling together, flat around the sun in their own orbits, never colliding, fixed orbits. We know their orbits well in advance. So what we call transits or gochara falls can be known at birth for whole life because planets' orbits are fixed. We know when they will hit all your points or mudras in your chart. Okay. The ecliptic. The ecliptic has the sun in the middle, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Moon, Mars, asteroid belt, Jupiter, Saturn. That's our solar system. It's a frisbee of planets rotating around the sun, and it is flying through the arm of a galaxy that looks like a spiral flower. In one of those spirals, is our solar system really small? And it's moving through that arm. It's got its own speed and movement. But it's with the arm. 
It's a part of this galaxy. The reason we care about the zodiac is because that's where all the stars are. There's not as many stars up or down because that's the flat arm of the galaxy. That's why it's the Milky Way. Did you know the planets follow the Milky Way? Because it is the ecliptic. It may look up to you, but it's actually, think of it as flat. That's the flat of the galaxy. At least. So when we stand on Earth, on the very top of Earth, and we look out across our solar system and the galaxy, we see our planet, friend, neighbors. And then we see stars that just go on and on and on in a flat way, and then there's some above and below too. Those are things outside our galaxy. Our galaxy is a flat thing. So when we look around us, When we look around us, we see these distinct signs, 12 of them. And, and the ancients assigned animal names and so forth to them. Aries, Taurus, Gemini, or Mesha, Vrishabha, Mithuna. Depends on what language you use. Those are emitting tons of waves at us. Here's the earth. Here's those signs. <laughs> Tons of waves are hitting the earth from the signs. Between the signs and the earth, our planets are way in here. As they move around the sun and the earth moves around the sun, every one of those planets seen from the earth appears to be having a sign behind it. That's the sign we say, it's in. When we look from the earth at every planet, when you're born, marking exactly what degree of each sign is behind that planet. That's your chart. And from where you were born on the earth, if one looks directly east, since the earth is rotating like this, and the signs are coming up like this, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, as the day goes by, we rotate around. So all 12 of them rise, one every two hours, roughly. If you look east at the moment of a birth and see what degree is rising of what sign, that's called the ascendant. That's the middle of the first house, or that's the main, that's the first house maker, the ascendant. It's an angle, like mine is nine degrees Aries. That becomes like a planet. That's a very important point we found out as we watched through thousands of years. Then we found out, now we had your planets and your signs for your birth and the ascendant. But we found out that these things called houses, like east, the ascendant, is the first house. And we figured out it goes Counterclockwise, like down under the earth and up over the top of you around to the 12th. Houses. The signs can be in any one of those, but it's equal in the Vedic Jyoti system of India. Equal, which means whatever your rising sign is, that is your first house. That sign is your first house. So Aries is my first house. Even though I have 9 degrees Aries rising and there's 30 degrees in the sign, that's my first house. Other systems do it other ways. Let's stay with our Hindu friends down in India, not up here in Ireland or Scotland, just for now. Okay, now, we discovered houses are like parts of your mind, and the signs are more like colorings for those houses, like my first house, which is your body, and your overall way in life? Mine is Eddie's, god of war, called Mesha in Sanskrit, the ram, and he is the ram in the West as well. <clears throat> Eric feels glorious. You hear me?
on a passive thing. Signs are colorings, houses are parts of your life. So these signs are beaming energy into the earth, the planets are in front of them, here on earth, what happens? All these rays are vibrations, and the planets are giving off vibrations. First of all, gravity, they're pulling on each other. Oh yes, they are. The planets actually pull on each other, they perturb each other's orbits, and they have to take it into calculation even in Jyoti software. Mine does, pretty much they all do. It's a part of NASA's code. The perturbations of the planets upon the earth and moon are well known. That means they're pulling the whole planet out of orbit exactly like that, depending on how far away they are and which one it is. But even the outer planets, Uranus and Neptune, pull on the Earth and Moon, even though they are three times as far away as Saturn first. Next, three times that. <laughs> That's far. Still, their gravity pulls noticeably on the Earth and Moon, and it's calculated in. Now. If they can pull on the planet, they can pull on everything on the planet. If the planet has to move, so do you. You have to move in space 50 miles with the planet and then back because Mars made a transit sort of slow like and over a few months we went 50 miles in and then we came back out. We didn't notice it. Fact is, we all got different types of radiation, vibrations, a little different than any other time. We can read that, Jyotish. Why? Because vibration controls matter. Matter moves under the influence of vibration. I'll show you that. My proposition to you is that this is a complex creation made by a great imaginative God. And what it is, is he puts in a ton of matter. And then a vibration, or an original vibration, inside a closed chamber, and it's reverberating and fractaling ever since to a finer and finer nature. The earth has been refined. Life has been put on it. Human life has arisen more and more. I'm telling you that this is a complex hunk of clay that is being held together by vibration, past and present, by the planets, by the universe only. That there is no I making this body. That it is wholly the universe, which is wholly God. What am I? The witness. The sentient witness. The knower. The thing that says I. Even if my arm is cut off, I still say I. Even if my other arm is cut off, and both my legs, and both my ears, and my scalp, and some of my skin is burned off, I'm still going to say, I, and I'm still going to feel like the same person. That is the sentient soul putting its nature on the intelligence and mind, which are part of the body. The complex vibrations of all the signs and planets over such a long period of time have stirred up a complex situation on Earth where we have complex bodies known as humans walking around doing all kinds of things and perceiving it as free will, in fact running under determinism, in fact witnessing souls only witnessing, pure, going to go to heaven, but thinking in these minds. The sentence has illuminated the body and the mind the body has to deal with the situation of being ascension in a material body. I want to live forever. I want to have wings. This material body is so limited. Our aspirations are greater than Earth and Zippo. Because we are greater than Earth and Zippo. This physics is made to be impermanent. But God has a permanent physics on the other side. Everything's balanced. Yin Yang, Radha Krishna. Go to school and learn for years, and then get out and play for years and do whatever you want in adult life. Be in material life here for a while, learn a lot of hard lessons. That forms your base identity to enter heaven. You'll be born in heaven out of this place. What other choice do you have to believe in? Atheism. 
in any other name, form, you name. I don't care what you call it. You don't believe in the personal God. You don't believe in theism. Theism is about the personal God. Now, he has such a bright light around all his spiritual planets. It's called the Brahma Jyoti. That means the spiritual light. God's light. And um, you can stop there if you want. Like if, you know, if you believe in the void or the light and you want to go to the light, you can. It'll be there for you if that's your name. And after a while, you might get bored in it. Millions of years of bliss. And you'll drop into the spiritual world or back here to make it to the personal spiritual world. Which is just like this. Here now, people, building, things to do, love, art, but it's eternal and there's no problems. No anxiety is the name of heaven. Vaikuntha, no anxiety. In the Sanskrit scriptures. All these waves are coming at us. It's refined us. It's actually tossed up human bodies, made it possible. And in those is the riding with the sentient soul. If the whole of earth was killed all at once, there would be a cloud of billions and billions of sentient souls floating around you before they moved into another dimension, however God wants to die. As he put you here now, he will place you again and again until he brings you to his sweet self in heaven eternal. Why do I believe these things? They seem logical with what I see around me. Number one. Number two. They have been passed down to me through thousands of years of oral tradition from multiple countries, finding the same things in their hearts and in nature with their greatest mind. Number three, that's called scripture, but it's originally oral tradition. So I read the scripture. Number four, I wrote and studied Jyotish thoroughly, so I know determinism is real. Number five, I like myself too much, and I can too well see that I am a sentient witness who witnesses the pains and pleasures of this body and its mind. I'm, you're kind of behind it all. You just watch. Because you're a pure, eternal soul. You're being trained. You're not really responsible for your life. You didn't pick it. I didn't pick being white. In fact, I kind of like him down on the white people, aren't I? You know, a little bit. Being so warlike and all. Now, you didn't pick this one. He who placed you here can place you again. Isn't this place amazing? He who made this place can make a better place. He who can make an impermanent physics that recycles us and teaches us can make a permanent physics where we enjoy with him in eternity and bliss and knowledge fully forever. Om, amen, Abram. Om Tat Sat, Sat Sri Akal, Salam Aleikum, Pizza Crafty with you, Shalom. Uh huh. Nam Ne Kyo, Renge Kyo, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, Pizza Crafty with you, Kiri Aleizan, Shalom, Salam, Salam Aleikum, Allah Atta, uh huh, Hare Krishna. That's God rap, man. You know, that's what we do on the continuum. You know, we stand up there on the clouds and we like try to like do that better than anybody else. And one day I came up with this one that goes like this. <laughs> but they sold me, but they said, come on inside, and with all of Buddha, Jesus moved with Shiva God abide. We are one. <laughs> I was talking to my mates up there about the Buddhist I, I met up in you know, Tibet when I never went there in this life. Um yeah, so the swirling of the planets in front of these forces of rays, as they're rays, and so you get these colorings, and astrologers can read that. Like I have Jupiter and Sagittarius in the ninth house, which is that angle from the east. It's like if you're facing east, it's the angle of the yarmulke cup of the Jews, of the sh The ninth house is that way, yarmulke, Spinning hair thingy, Brahma Rudra. That way, that's the ninth house. And I have Jupiter there in Sagittarius, and the color of that is like orange from Jupiter combined with red from Sagittarius. It's fiery and bright. In the ninth house, it brightens up 
the house of God. Remember, houses are parts of your life. The ninth house is the part of your life. How you relate to God, teachers, gurus, higher knowledge, long distance travel, because it's very educational. Well, I have it bright and hot. And I'm bright and hot about the subject of God. Yeah. Krishna, Allah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the planets mix with the colors of the signs beaming in at you. And when you're born, we make your chart for real, from real science. And that's the universe saying, when you take your first breath and you separate from your mother and your individual entity for the first moment, you're done. You're cooked. And the chart is like the universe going, here's the stamp on that one. Because it's even localized to your place of birth on the side of the earth. That's how the ascendant is got. By your longitude and latitude. And we look over the earth. For real. We do real science in Jyotish. So the chart is specific. Your location and your date. And so it's like, this is your flower chart, man. That, that's the flower you are. That's your fortune, that's your fate, that's your destiny, that's your DNA. It matches your DNA. And your life will unfold as the dashas say. Like right now, I got sores on my face. I'm in Mercury dasha. It's in the second house, which rules this part of the body. And oh, Mercury is my lord of sickness, being the, the sixth lord. The sixth house brings sickness. His lord does it too. I'm in the dasha, meaning he rules. Yay, I'm in the dasha of my disease lord. <clears throat> so he's got this uh, folliculitis thing going on right here, which is perfect, perfect timing. Um, actually, you see, it works. Jyotish works. Jyotish works. I'm not kidding. As a rational adult from the west coast of America, born in 60, tested math genius at eight, on a roll high school, scholarship to college. I've studied and taught myself programming and astronomy Jyotis, kind of proven that I have a brain. Jyotis works. As the great B.B. Raman, whose book taught me, said, you don't believe in Jyotish, and I do. And the difference between us is that I've studied it. I've studied Jyotish thoroughly. For 20 whole years. That's all I've done. I'm Das Gauravani. I started writing a program called Gauravani Jyotish on May 27th, 93. It's almost May now of 2013. That's 20 years. A Saturn cycle. My nose has been to a Jyotish program and those books and those customers and those concerns for 20 years. Nothing else. Other than just living. I made this stuff for fun because trying to un understand history and my ancestors. Um, so it's all about rays and angles. Aspects, for example, are the planet's rays are going out and they're affecting other planets' rays. When rays mix at different types, they befuddle or complement each other. They form different rays. And we take that into account. And they, we have found out our, over time, by noticing which angles each planet sort of twists or affects more than everywhere else. Everything's about these forces going out and affecting things, and everything is affected in this way. Force comes, and thing goes. Everything is spinning. Everything is spinning. You're spun into a being in the womb. Spinal column first, and everything spins around it and forms. That's why you got that mark here. Everything is round, flows, it spins. Not square, not from God. Round, flows, spins, round veins, round vines, round trees, round moon, sun, planets, spinning in circles. Complex vibrations make complex things move. I'll show you that in video. And if there's a sentient in there, then he's perceiving it as a light. But it's controlled by the universe. And our bright choice is to believe that that's made by God for a reason. Because the other choice is 
darkness. It's to say no to life. It's to say life is meaningless. It's to say we are meaningless. I don't believe that. I believe in God and you are so eternal. You're my eternal sibling. It's my choice. And it's been my choice all my life. And I have Jupiter in the ninth, aspect in the first, from his own sign, which clearly says, I will be religious, and sure enough, I am. Again, determinism, not a choice. He who can hear me, you are made. Those who cannot are made to not. Determinism. In all languages, peace, talk, shalom, salam. In all languages, praise God, Hare Krishna, Allah Akbar. Satsrita, Namneha Ringyakya, the Dharma, the Sangha. To you all, to your souls. I love you. Good night for now.